you bought it. Hey, Brian. Howdy. Hi, how are you? Nice. How are you? Chili? Come on in. Let me show you around. Yeah. Gentlemen. Well, I recognize a few of your faces. Uh, Ennis Forrest, right? Mr. Crawford. I go out like your picture. Uh, Loomis Editorial, right? Right, sir. Mr. Crawford. And um, Brian Gannett. Joanne Fowler, woman's face. Yes, right. Nice to meet you, sir. Bob, Bob Taping, National. Bob, how are you? And uh, Chuck Stribling, Metro. Cut. Is that right? Well, you could try Freeman, but no one ever does. Cut, that's almost as bad as Trip. Harrison Crawford III, Triple Trip. I went all through school with, is this trip necessary? <laughs> well, the year I was born, they were opening King Tut's tomb, and... My mother had to be restrained from naming me King. <laughs> Freeman. Pleasure. Uh, Mr. Fowler, gentlemen, this is my associate, Shelton Lewis. Shelley. The high command. Please sit down. <coughs> well, I guess the first thing I want to do is end all the rumors. How do I know there are rumors? Well, this is the third paper I've taken over this way. And unless you're a very different breed of cat, Oh, he's bringing in a whole new staff from back east. He's going to turn this into a tabloid. That sounds familiar? Yeah, and the one I like is where Dartmouth has to be on the sports page every day. <laughs> of course, that one happens to be true. <laughs> <laughs> now, the point I want to make is this. I've got a pretty good idea how unsettling it is when somebody new takes over like this. So the first thing I want to do is assure all of you there's no firing squad. That's the word. Because the sooner you stop looking for a pink slip in your paycheck every week, the sooner we can all get down to the job of keeping this paper from going down the drain. And that's exactly where it's going, unless we get 100,000 new readers and fast. I'm not going to get on a soapbox about it, but I think that the survival of the sun is important. I think it's a fine paper. And I didn't come out here to bury it. I want to make it work. Now, this is your town, and you know it. I know a few things about publishing. So I think it's a perfect marriage. That you shouldn't deny me my conjugal rights. <laughs> or unless I should find some 25-year-olds with 30 years of experience, your job's are safe. No, I think we'll get along just fine. Now, any uh, questions? Um, yeah, are you serious about Dartmouth? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you have to start chopping heads. This payroll's all aligned. How about a little discretion? Can't afford it. Now you're going to have to get rid of them. Now look at this. You know what my dad told me? So when is this? That this newspaper is going to do two things to me. It's going to break my heart and make me look like a fool in that order. Now you tell me. What the hell have I gotten myself into? I've never told you this before, Shelley, but I hope you know it. I mean, if we start to go under and you want to get out, uh, I don't see any reason why we both have to be fooled. Do you? Trip, your father's not God. He can be wrong. You know what I need? That's what I need. Hello, Madeline. Goodbye, Shelley. Mm. The love of a good woman. You got it. Well, bad? No, not bad. So, what do you need? Oh, I need a war. <laughs> I'll call the Kremlin. No, I need a local war. Something I can punch at. Demand punch. I've got to get their attention out there. And this can be a great paper. Yeah, I've got to get them to buy it. I need a star. All right. Your phone's off the hook. Harrison Crawford called me. He wants to see you. I don't write. This man I can't read. I know who he is. We're going to lunch with him one hour. Hi. Hi, that's, uh... Roseanne. Roseanne. That's my agent, George. Well, uh, Vince, please, lunch. Make some coffee, man. Maybe just, uh, warm up the coffee. Okay. What'd he say? I told you what he said. Don't tell me again. What in the hell? Did you get paid for the line? He said he wants to see you. What do you want me to do? What'd he say? No, no, it's important to me. How'd he say it? Well, come on, did he say... Uh, 
Whatever happened to that marvelous economist, Vince Farino? I mean, I know he he retired to write books. Do you suppose we could get him back? Did he say it that way? Almost. He had a fellow call me up and say, can I arrange a meeting with you? I said, sure. I know what they say. Vince Farina used to be a great newspaper man. Now he writes books. You know what books are, little things there with real paper. Vincent, please. What'd you ask for? Vincent, I am getting the idea if they offer you a job now, you'll take it. George, the IRS has declared me a disaster area. I owe back taxes, alimony, I owe child support. Hi. Hi. Where the cups? <laughs> Get me a job, George. Get me a job. Johnny. Tony, 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 save my life. We, I, I, I've got one bad boy in the whole store. Give us a hand up front, hmm? Sure. Yeah, we're just, that's a sweetheart. called Vince and I told him that you wanted to meet with him. He had the nerve to ask me, could it wait two weeks? He has to finish his book. <laughs> Writers. Well, I'm sorry if I interrupted the muse. Uh, I'll be brief. But, but when you're on a roll, uh, you, you want to keep going, right? I understand, yes. Uh, Vince, um, I want to bring back The Godfather. It was a good column. I bet you I get a half a dozen calls a month still, after all this time, from newspapers, magazines, all over the country. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sure you do. Vince, as you know, I'm trying to save the sun. And it occurred to me that since you're out here now, I know you're out of the business, but... Well, I figured, um, You might still have some feeling for that wonderful amorphous thing we call a newspaper. A feeling that makes you die a little every time one goes down. You see? Georgie? Not money hot, that's what it's... <laughs> Well, I'm still foolish enough to believe that's what it's all about, yeah. Uh, me too. Well, I understand you can't eat sentiment. So along with heart, I'm sure you're wondering what I'm going to offer you to make it worthwhile. Well, Mr. Crawford, now, you said yourself, uh, Vincent is out of the newspaper business. He's now a respected member of the country's artistic community. I mean, to go back to writing a column now, I mean, I'm not knocking it, but, uh, my gosh, Vince was a household word. The Godfather, Vince Perino, the biggest thing since Walter Winchell. Nobody's arguing that, but we're past that. Well, if Vince is happy as an artist, that's fine. I certainly wouldn't want to corrupt his integrity by my grubby commercial enterprise. On the other hand, if he feels burdened by the back taxes he owes, or the alimony he owes, or the mortgage he hasn't paid for three months on his ex-wife's house, or all the rejection slips he's collected for everything he's written since L is for love and larceny, if he can stay sober, I'm willing to give him a chance to see if he can still cut it as a newsman. He'll excuse me. Think about it.
doing anyway? Anyway. At the beach? Oh, and I told Carolyn take her to Ojai. Ojai? Ojai. What? Why don't you get out of it? Maybe. Did? Yeah. Call me. I will. What time, uh, what time getting up? Seven. <laughs> Seven? Sure, I jog two miles. Yeah, two yeah. miles? You want to jog? Oh, I love to jog. Hey, you. Hey, what are you do? What are you doing? Hey, hey, hold it! Hold it! T-O-N. A Malibu co-ed was found shot to death for no apparent reason. Her body was found outside her home earlier tonight. Murder. Thank you, Mr. Pete, very much. I'm sorry. Uh, say, Lieutenant, you got something for me? Uh, later, Rieger. Uh, Riger, Rieger, sir. Riger. You got... Lieutenant, yeah. lady's telling me her boyfriend chased a prowler last night about a block away. He was mm -hmm. hiding in the bushes. Eyewitness? What do you think? Yeah, good, clear descriptions, right? Aren't they always? Okay, well, type it up for me, will you, and leave it on my desk? Thanks. I got a good feeling, you know? Really? You got a hunch? We're gonna figure it out. Figure it out? What do you mean? Who done it? Yeah. <laughs> Man, I haven't figured out anything. In Figured out. Oh, come on. What about last week? What last week? Oh, a week before last. Over on Sepulveda. Hey. Ramon, viejo, hey. The way I remember that now. We were asking some woman if she might have some idea who kicked the door off its hinges and beat her up, right? And she says no. And we're standing there trying to figure it out. And some guy in his underwear comes out of the back with a knife and tries to go to work. On you. And Mrs. What's her face is hollering and screaming. And we say, is that the man? And she says, yes, but don't hurt him. We bagged him, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, right. I bet we still get a citation. Come on, drive. Drive. <laughs> right. You know, it's the damnedest thing. Hmm? Every time I look up and see you there, I feel like I've lost eight years someplace. Yeah, I look up and bang, it's Boston. Well, still looking all right, aren't you? You're still working. Mm -hmm. Listen, give me, you know, give me a clue. Hmm? What are the people, uh, what are they uh, hollering about out there nowadays? I don't know, I've, I've been in a room, you know. Yeah, well, the war's over. Who won? They did. Do me a favor. Sure. I, I, I used to write a column. I wrote it. What the hell did I write about? Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well. Wait a minute here. You want a nice little story? Yeah. Girl killed in Brentwood. How come? 
Who is she? Do you have anything more recent? Well, that was a year ago, April. Uh, I have more of those. You can take that one if you want. When was this taken? Uh, that was last summer. Um, we took her to Hawaii, you know, as a, as a college graduation present. Yeah? Hmm. You told the police your daughter had no enemies. She didn't. Maybe someone you didn't know about. Mr. Perino, I know I'm Annie Lou's mother. But ask anybody you want. It wasn't a soul who knew her who didn't just love her. And I know I shouldn't say this about my own daughter, but she was a dream girl. <laughs> All parents tell him that. That's not true. You'd be surprised. Well, let me ask you a question. How do you feel about what the police have done so far? Well, they've, uh, they were here last night. They looked around, they asked questions. How do you feel about that? Satisfied, not satisfied? Huh? Well, uh, I, I don't ask them what I was just wondering, because it's obvious you're both intelligent people. I know you have feelings about things, about a lot of things, about me, about your neighbors, how they've been. So I know you have some feeling about what the police have done. They're doing everything they can, aren't they? You don't think so? I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. You're the ones that have seen the investigation. But there's been a bit... As you say, uh, there hasn't really been that much to see. I suppose it's just one more case to them. How do you feel about that? I'll say this that I want whoever killed my daughter caught and put, put where he can't ever do that again. And if the police can't, if they can't do it, I swear to God, I'll do it myself. Now, this is nice and clean. Yeah, well, that's too nice and too clean. I mean, that's the chronicle. Do you understand what I'm, I'm trying to get at here? Why I want a new look? To attract readers. Well, of course, yeah, but we also need to be able to try to attract advertisers. I created a new arts and leisure section to get more pages so I could sell a lot more space. Ads. For restaurants, theaters, art galleries. Hey, face it, without ads, you don't have a paper. Like, without commercials, you don't have television, right? Well, if we don't get the public to buy what's around that space, I mean, if they don't look at the front of the newspaper and reach down in their pockets for the nickels and dimes. In large numbers. 400,000 paid circulation last week. 800,000 readers. That's not good enough. Not for a city this size. Now, fart space salesman can guarantee one million readers minimum. We're in trouble. Do you really believe that people in this city, in large numbers, give a damn what happens 5,000 miles away from Jordan? Well, obviously I do, or that story wouldn't be there. Well, not necessarily. You know, maybe you're trying to shove it down their throats because you think it's good for them. Shelly, Brian, come on. Yes, I understand. Right. I'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. Where's Bruno? I guess he's home in bed. I don't know. This is brilliant. Oh, good. Yeah, I liked it. Nice to see he hasn't lost his touch. Okay, let's go with this. Get out some promos. Vince Perino and the Dream Girl Killer. And where is it writ that we should keep our hands off the police? No place. I mean, we try okay, to... from now on, we don't. What's the murder rate in Los Angeles? Let's find out. Percentage of unsolved homicides. I'll just compare with other cities. Perino's got something here. Let's hit on the cops. I told you I was looking for a local issue, something that people would buy. Well, if we deliver it right, this is it. I wish I could help you. I mean, I wish I could say, come on, let's go out and jump in the car and go make an arrest. It's still early. What do you want me to put in the bed? I don't know. Well, what we've got? Heard noises, uh, saw something suspicious, that's it. 
Thing like this happens, you get a lot of funny phone calls, right? Yeah, it takes time. We gotta check it all out. Hey, well, I'm the new kid on the block. Huh? Something breaks. Appreciate you giving me a phone call. Home number? Office number. Jay, talk to you real soon. I can't hide. And you're uh, Ray, right? Ray and Jay. That's it. I'll be sure to spell your names right. You read that? Does Harold Payton have to find the killer himself? I hope not, says Vince Perino. But until the police stop playing games and start playing cop. How much do you figure a guy like that makes? There are no guys like that. Nice indeed. What's that mean? Well, they're from the same gun. There's no two ways about that. Would you like to see? No, thanks. How the hell did you know they match? Elementary, Watson. Elementary. So what are you playing now, detective? Uh, I couldn't pass the test. You got an IQ over 60. They failed. Funny. I want to know what you know about these murders. Well, I know it's what I read in the newspapers. Two girls. They're both shot in front of the houses. They're both blondes. Now we follow that probably they were shot with the same gun, wasn't they? Uh, Mr. Perino, I was wondering if I might have your autograph. Yes? Uh, for the kids. Sure. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. Come on up to my office, Vince. <clears throat> You're not going to write about this, are you? Yeah. Gonna make you a genius, Lou. And all you want are some exclusive stories, That's right? That's all I want. Wrong. You get your exclusive on one condition. Stop walking elephants over the cops and go back to calling us L.A.'s finest. With none finer than Michael Moore. No. I'll call you as soon as I get anything. If I get anything. Well, if nothing turns up, watch out for the elephants. Send them in. Perino. Are we alone on this? Exclusive, he says. From a source high up in the PD. All right. Let's go to town with it. Page one, pictures of both girls. Wait a minute. Let me finish. All right. Banner it. Big. Dream girl killer strikes again. Exclamation point. We in sync? Huh? Oh, yeah. Something on your mind? Forget it. I'll be glad to. 
Tell Perino I said good work. Ramon. Hey. I guy did it again. They want us to coordinate the investigation. Hey. What are you talking about? Who did what again? You read the papers this morning? White female shot to death over in Echo Park. Oh, I saw it in the news. What well, makes them think it's our guy? We could have been stars, Bato. They matched up the bullets. Who did? Oh, I had lunch with Harriet today, which is very nice. My friend at first. Then we did a little shopping. Oh, no, I kind of like that. Mm. No, you hate it. No. <laughs> so, how was your day? Oh, did those new figures come in? Our circulation was up 6,000 last week. That's wonderful. I've got a long way to go, but I may even get a little sleep tonight. Uh, I've been doing too well in that area. Mm, the 3 a.m. terror. Well, I, I, re I just don't understand what could be so frightening. I mean, what's the worst thing that could happen? Really? I'd break my heart and look like a fool. Harrison? Sybil, how are you? Nice oh, I'm splendid, thank you. This is my wife, Madeline. This is Sybil James. How do you do? Oh, well, Mr. Publisher of the Chronicle, right? Well, I am a devoted reader. It's a pleasure. Oh, That's wonderful. <laughs> your husband has certainly made his presence felt in a short time. Aha, uh -huh. sounds like you're saying, ouch. Uh -huh. <laughs> now that you mention it, maybe I am a little. Would you repeat that to my board of directors? It's good for us, actually. Makes us remember that we don't know all the answers. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying yourself out here. Oh, I am very much, thanks. And keep on reading us. Oh. That is good for the balance. <laughs> <laughs> I intend to. Uh, excuse me, surely. Say boom. Opposition, huh? Mm hmm. Since we cranked up, their street sales are off 40,000. You know, you ought to do something at work, you know, like you did back in Boston. Uh, as a matter of fact, Carolyn, you know, the funny looking gal, mm -hmm. mentioned something to me about counseling girls at a halfway house downtown. And? And I said I'd think about it. Why? I thought you'd like that. I just want to think about it, Trip. You should have heard me defending you today. You do? About what? <sighs> the ladies at lunch, they all want to know what you're doing to the sun. And you thought you had to defend me, huh? Well, don't I? No, 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 you don't. Okay. And you can tell the ladies at lunch that I'm saving a newspaper. That's just what I told them. Did you believe it? Yes. What? I just wonder if you have to be quite so strident about it. I thought we were talking about you. Well, now we're talking about you. Oh. Anyway, why don't we put the paper to bed? Mm hmm?
you know your current registration tag's not on your license plate. Oh. I, uh, I know it. You feel all right? Sure, I'm fine. Well, you gonna show it to me? Sure, I got it here. Uh, oh, here it is. You know what I'll, I, I could do? I, I, I'll get off at the next turn off and I, I could put it right on. Put it on right now. Okay. All right. No more. So what do you got? I think we've got something like another son of Sam. Number one, Emmy Lou Payton of Malibu, a co-ed on her way home from school when she was murdered. She lived with her parents and was described as being a very good student. Victim number two, Phyllis Potter, in her early 20s. She was murdered on her way home from a tennis game. The last time she was seen alive was when her girlfriend dropped her off near her home in Echo Park. Victim number three, Alexandria Whitlock. Like victim number one, she also lived in Malibu. She was jogging on the beach, and that's where her body was found. Police say the only connection between the victims so far is the fact they were young, blonde, and were shot with the same gun. Police also say they do not have a suspect. How did you get this? Highway patrolman. He stopped that guy about a mile from the beach where Whitlock was shot. About the right time, too. And on the other hand. Yeah, exactly. I, there's no reason to think it's our guy. And uh, it is different from the other sketch we've been using. Captain, is something making you happy? No. Good. So what do you think? Well, the first sketch is based on the Sheratons' description. Did you meet the Sheratons? Yeah. Lovely old couple. They uh, saw a guy running after Phyllis Potter was killed. It was dark. They're old. So what do you think? Well, a patrolman is an expert witness. To what? True. And what did he see? A guy in a car? True. The Sheraton's description may be off, but at least we know for sure that they actually did see the killer. So we're not using this second sketch. So you don't want us to circulate it? No. You got a psychological profile? Uh, yeah. Paranoid, compulsive, uh, sexually repressed. He's probably, uh... Did Dr. Brenneman tell you all that? Well, any idiot could tell me that. That's a standard sketch of a psycho killer. Look, you and, uh... Savala. Go and check with Brenneman, then come back and check with me. Paranoid, compulsive, sexually repressed. Oh, yeah? Afraid of women, probably impotent. Sounds like my brother-in-law. <laughs> that description would fit millions of men, but then not all of them are psychotic. And only a few psychotics are killers. They're out there and they're convinced that the victims are the chosen or the God Almighty himself. But you know, in over 50 years, they haven't killed as many young women as kids driving home with liquor in them. I mean, this is a rare bird. Can you tell us, like, where would this kind of guy hang out? Probably won't find him in a ballpark. Feels too inadequate, too yeah. unsure of his masculinity. What about a bar? Would he be a drinker? No, I think not. Be afraid of losing control. Where does that leave us? Uh, library. No. Health club? No. Disco. Never. <laughs>
Lucille, the check is in the mail. Yeah, I know it's an old joke, but it happens to be true. The check's in the mail. I don't make a fortune. You know what my take-home pay is. Of course I know what the cost of living is. I pay the tab, don't I? I can't talk to you. I'll call you later. Goodbye. You know, some people have a disease, a real affliction. They can't stand success. Which means you didn't like the cemetery story. I thought it stank. It's your opinion. Which happens to be the one that counts. Ah, oh, come on. I'm giving you good stuff, aren't I? You were until I made the mistake of showing you my appreciation, and then you went soft. Now, worse, you went obvious. So it's not easy coming up with four winners every week. Vince, if you can't handle the job, the great American novel awaits. All right, she likes what I wrote. Now you want it better. You don't know what you want, but you'll know it when you see it. Terrific. We're way ahead in the biggest story of the year, maybe of the decade. Now, we have to keep a fire under it, and I'm counting on you for that. You. Now, you got the talent. you got a column. you got a wide-open franchise. You don't have to sit around like some nickel-and-dime reporter waiting for things to happen. You can make them happen. What do you want me to do, write him a letter? Yeah. If you had known them, you could not have killed them. You need help. You need the care and attention which only doctors can provide. If you give yourself up, I will see that you get it. I think you know you can trust me. If you want to surrender to me, a message to the sun at any hour of the day or night will reach me. Well, he just wants a story. That's all he wants. Who, the godfather? Why, you don't think so? Nah, uh-uh. Nope. I don't think he's like that. I don't think he's like that at all. You really go for him, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Vince Perino, I see you reading his stories all the time. Yep. I read his column. I mean column. Is, is, there, is that the whole thing? Mm, oh, no, there's more. Uh, oh. For your own welfare, give yourself up. This newspaper guarantees that you will be given all the benefits of our American system of justice. Uh, I mean, in the first place, how does anybody know he's even going to read that? What do you mean, how does anybody know he's going to read that? Well, my girlfriend says that he's probably some... some kind of... Well, I mean, a person who would do that. Well, did you see that picture of him in the newspaper they had? Yeah, yeah, I saw it. Well, come on. I mean, he's going to read this? Uh, you know that, uh, place that I was telling you about? What, the discotheque? Well, uh, a lot of people aren't going there anymore. Sure, they're staying home. That's right, they're staying home. I'll tell you something. I even got a new lock for my door. You? You got a, a new lock for your door? Really? called me sick. That's pretty funny. Do you know that? Anybody who wants to take a look around and see what's going on can tell what's really sick. We're soft. We had to take on an enemy right now. We couldn't do it. You know who makes men feeble and corrupted? So do I, Mr. Godfather, sir. 
I'm surprised you said I'm the one who was sick knowing as much as you know. Don't think I won't remember that. I suppose that means I'm next. Signed Centurion. I guess he didn't like being called the dream girl killer. All right, see if we can still buy some 10 second radio spots for tonight. I'll find out. I clear page one from the text of this letter and Vince's piece. I'll make it first with Vince. How did you feel when you first opened the letter and realized that it was from the man who shot down the three girls? You just said that you might be next. Now, that's a marvelous angle. Play that up. How does that make you feel? <laughs> now, rerun Vince's original piece in a box. Get Jacoby to do a sidebar on the envelope, the paper, the postmark, etc. See if you can get someone to do a quick handwriting analysis. Okay, go to work. Uh, question? Mm-hmm. Shouldn't we give that thing to the police? Well, fine, give it to them. Just make sure that we photograph it first and make sure it's too late to get into the Chronicle. Um, I'll take it down to my guy and make some points, sir. And suppose that thing is a phony. I mean, I know college kids think it a great joke to come off with something like that. Are you saying we shouldn't publish it? I'm saying we should be responsible about it. Come on, we got a newspaper to get out. Wait a minute. How would you play it? Well, I'd have Vince use it as the uh, basis for a column in his usual spot. He could use it as a springboard into all the confessions the police are getting. You know, all the people who wrote in that their brother-in-law is the dream girl killer or the guy next door. That's all you give it now. To me, that's all it's worth. New standard vending machine sales up 3,500 week before last, up 2,500 last week. You have to be very careful. You know, sometimes sometimes rights come into conflict, Tut. I don't have to tell you that. Like they say, you've forgotten more about this business than I'll probably. I just don't want to overlook the fact that the public has the right to know. And incidentally, those three dead girls have the right to life, too. I mean, he isn't the only one with rights in this thing. Sometimes you have to make choices. And then, too, you and I have a duty, don't we? Hmm? Okay. Okay. It's only a story day after tomorrow, the rat fish in it. Have you traced the gun? Yeah, we tracked about 30 of these Webley and Scots. But not to the killer. That's right. Listen, let me ask you a question. Yeah, go ahead. That letter you got, apart from yourself and a couple of editors and copy boys and photographers, did anybody else handle it? Yeah, well, that's about it, except for an assistant police chief, you know. My well, hell, fingerprinting's not that great a science anyway. Huh. Listen, as long as they're biting, you think you might toss out another one of your letters? You might get another answer from your pen pal. And if you do, would you please call me before you open it? I mean, as long as that doesn't uh, violate the First Amendment, inhibit free flow of information, stuff like that. The J uh, stands for John, doesn't it? I looked it up. You looked it up? Yeah, I want to do an article on it. Maybe they called you Jack in high school, huh? Jack Armstrong, the all-American boys, is that what the kids called you? Yeah, kids that didn't know any better. Where are you from? Skip it, will you? Come on, I can look it up. Well, then look it up. Your father a cop? Well, I don't want to knock you. I want to make you a star. Look, I don't want to be a star, Perino. My private life is my private business. Are you trying to hide something? I mean, you take a little dope and... Uh, All right, Perino, money? you want my story? I'll give it to you. My father was a killer, armed robber. He died in prison. You want to say that? You need to print that? You want to ruin my mother's life? Go ahead, print it. You know, I'm nervous. I've never been to a mansion before. <laughs> it's not a mansion. Hey, come on, Mano, will you? Oh, hey, yeah, you call me brother and everything, but shoot, man, this is the first time I ever met your family. <laughs> well, I've never met your family. That's 
true. Come on. <laughs> no, that's that's quite true. Uh, Ray, uh, uh, take a look at this bunch and help me out. Answer a question for me. A psychiatrist, God knows in this family we need one. A lawyer, a law student, a literate incendiary, the worst kind. And then, of course, there's Jay. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 listen. Raymond, I want you to clear up a mystery for me. What in the heck is it that makes a man go out and become a cop? You mean apart from the money? <laughs> Come on, Dad. I agree. Leave the man alone. I'm asking a simple question. Don't listen to him. <laughs> uh, such a person is almost surely impotent, leading to a strong sense of inadequacy. He is uh, paranoid, compulsive, and, you know, it goes on like that. Predatory annual lieutenant, blah, 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 sure. Yeah. It's all right, straight out of the textbook. Poor guy's probably deathly afraid of women. <laughs> yeah, but what does all that mean, you know? How do you translate all that into predictable behavior? You know something? I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't want you to stop him almost as much as you want to. <laughs> well, great. Why doesn't he just walk in? <laughs> it's not that easy. You're a psychiatrist. What do you think? You think this guy just keeps on killing? Of course not. You'll stop him. Oh, sure. Me and him. Really, what do you think? I'm afraid that's usually the pattern. My guess is that the only way he can become neutralized, that is, get rid of the really terrible pain and horror and rage that he feels, is to keep on killing. And the more he kills, the more pain he feels, the more guilt he has to get rid of. And then there's the other concern, just how much is all this publicity affecting him? My God, he, he's gotten more headlines than Carter. Well, listen, he's not the only one the publicity's affecting. We're all going nuts. Last night at the library, I started talking to this guy, and he said he'd drive me home. He was nice, but I thought maybe he's the killer. You know the first thing you should do? The first rule in these critical times? Stay home, I suppose. <laughs> Stop reading the sun. No way. <laughs>
Zeller. No. Uh, Captain Maglin. Captain. And of course, you're Mayor Boyle. Can I miss? senselessness and the brutality and then try to allay everybody's Look at that. Stress. Three young women are dying and all they can do is turn Los Angeles and take a and we have to deal with it. Pediatrics orderly, please go to the emergency department. Pediatrics orderly, to the emergency department. I'm uh, Vince Perino. How do you do? Did you hear something, some kind of report? Just that they're doing everything they can. The girl's very young, very strong. I'm sure she'll be fine. She's on the track team. What team is that? University High. Did the other two girls go to the same school? Yes, they do. How are they? Do you, do you know anything? I'm afraid one of the girls passed away. Lori. Uh, Taylor. Yes, of course. Lori Taylor. May I have your name, sir? Mr. and Mrs. Jepson. No. Oh, no. Did she say anything? Please, no. no, I'm afraid she no, didn't. No, please don't. don't we please. did everything we could. She didn't regain consciousness. Oh. I'm very sorry. Oh, no, please don't. I say this now to the people of Los Angeles. Oh. These murders are senseless. They're brutal, and they're tragic. But there is no cause for panic. It helps nothing, and only makes matters worse. If we allow hysterical newspaper headlines and wild television speculation to make us so fearful we can't think straight. Let's be sensible. Let's not overreact. And let's remain calm, please. What newspapers are you talking about? I'm not pointing any fingers. I'm talking about anybody in any of the media who distorts this terrible business for their own ends. Oh! Ah, one more shot. All right. OK, we'll give it to you. <laughs> Look, it's a fundraising dinner for mental health. Uh -huh. How do you rate his chances? What, for re-election? Mm-hmm. Well, to be very honest, we're running scared. Proudy's a tough campaigner. All right, now that you got that on the record, uh, who do you think's going to be the next mayor? <laughs> Theodore Boylan. You surprise me. What's the date of the dinner? The 14th. All right, tell his honor that Mrs. Crawford is deeply grateful for the excuse to buy a new dress. <laughs> <laughs> oh, incidentally, one or two people over at the hall have been wondering whether the amount of play you've been giving to crime stories recently is such a great idea. Oh, yeah? Oh, you know, some talk. I know back east people go in for that kind of stuff. It works. But out here, I don't think people get off in quite the same way on having the bejeeper scared out of them. What people are you talking about, Mr. Seller? No, you know. People who buy the newspapers or the politicians who would rather not have the voting public reminded about all the crime out there. Wait a minute. Obviously, I'm not trying to tell you how to run your Well, newspaper. you know, I think that's exactly what you're doing. You're saying, come on out here and open your newspaper, Crawford. And if you don't make any trouble, we'll let you into the club. Isn't that what you're saying? No, I... I'm sure Boylan hasn't really thought through the implications of this. You see, he's asking me to betray a public trust. Now, I know you didn't come out here for a lecture in civics, but I'm going to give you one. The only institution in this country that keeps the government up to snuff is the press. Any proprietor of a newspaper who lets anybody in government tell them what to print should be run out of town. They're the last thing in Theodore Boylan's... Now, Boylan didn't send a member of his staff around just to hand out personal dinner invitations. He wanted to get a foot in the door. So he gets you to tell me about the one or two people at City Hall who uh, are screaming at you to keep the sun off their backs. Well, tell them to start cleaning up the crime in this town, and we'll get off their backs, no problem. But until then, we make them uncomfortable. I couldn't be more pleased. I'm sorry you feel that way. Yeah, well, uh, that's the way it goes. You uh, want to take on Boylan? 
Well, I don't know. Maybe we should go a little easier. Circulation was up 12,000 last week. And again, maybe we shouldn't. somebody that you'd notice because he was, you know, really tall or really short? No. Do you mind if I show you a picture? Not a photograph, just a, a drawing. Does that look anything like the man you saw? No, not really. Nothing at all like him. The hair, I guess. How about this one? It, that sort of looks like him. How would you change it to make it look more like him? I don't know. No way, I guess. Well. I think we're off and running. <laughs> uh, Lieutenant Armstrong. Hi, how are you doing? Any new suspects, any new leads? Did you talk to the survivor? Yeah. Did she give you anything? What paper are you with? A chronicle. Oh, yeah? Tell you what, come here. I'll give you some. What's going on? You won't go after the police because you might lose your sources. What sources? Read all about it in the Chronicle, but you sure won't read about it in the Sun. We got clobbered on our own story. The police have got a new drawing of the killer. Admit it, Vince, you got creamed. Well, it can't be everywhere. I got the pants, didn't I? The Chronicle, they don't have the pants. I got them. All I want to know is, do we or don't we have a source inside the police department yes. that we can rely on for yes. information? I'll make a phone call. I'll find out what happened. In the meantime, if you want to be nasty, go kick your dog. I just did. We finally did it. Got the Chronicle right down here in the dirt. <laughs> All right. Now you're talking cat and dog, no holds barred. <laughs> What's bothering you? You're working, aren't you? Here's a naive question. Whatever happened to the idea you're supposed to take pride in what you do for a living? I don't believe he said that. Do you believe he said that? Oh, come on. You're not that old. That went out. Assembly line put an end to that nonsense. Well, I don't know. It used to be a gas. Maybe it's something you ate this morning. <laughs> I remember my first job, the San Jose Mercury. Every morning I'd wake up and I couldn't believe it. I'm a newspaper man. X, X, to read all about it. It was like I was a member of some kind of elite. I had this sense when I walked down the street, you know, like it showed. Newspaper man. Superman. Yeah? Well, whatever happened to all that? We grew up. Is that what it was? That's what it was. I'll tell you what happened. Harrison Crawford the third. You're telling me he came along and changed things, huh? That's exactly what I'm telling you. What are you smoking? Bourbon. You're telling me he is ruining the paper because he is dealing with this centurion story and making it cheap and sensational. What do you think? I think it's cheap. What the hell? The Sun wasn't the Christian Science Monitor before, was it? 
That story about the mafia putting out a contract. I happen to like it. I like it. He made that whole thing up. He liked it. That law we never got before. Before he took over the paper, how many staffers did we have in Washington? How many did we, we have now? Ma- we had McCardle. He rewrote mm-hmm. handouts. No, who said he rewrote it? No, no, no. How many okay. do we have now? Hmm? Big City Daily. We don't even have a bureau in the nation's capital. I want a query, an AP White House story. Who do I ask? Hmm? UPI? It's a matter of degree. Nobody's saying we're Joe Pulitzer's gift to journalism, but uh, we did have some balance. Al, you know what happened to the good old days? Television happened. How old do you think I am? When the kids write about television. Nobody reads newspapers anymore for information. Except every editor of every oh. television newsroom. Hell, they don't believe it unless they read it. I'm telling paper. you, the public I'm talking about goes home at 6 o'clock, turns on the tube. If it's not on television, it didn't happen. And even if they know it happened, they figured they saw it on television. Yeah. You know how many people there are that are going to go to their graves convinced that they saw President Kennedy shot on television? Don't you think that television is being a wee bit, just a wee bit sensational on this centurion thing? Okay, sure. TV is a business. What are we? We're supposed to be better than that, Perino. And I can remember a time when you knew the difference. What you wrote about going to the police academy and learning how to use a gun like this one? Uh, it was it was it was interesting. See, Mr. Prino, I don't I didn't know all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, what's your name? Hey, come on! No, don't ask me questions like that. Look, okay, okay. If you don't want to say, it, it's no problem. Huh? Someday, all right? Someday I'll tell you. I I got a tape recorder in there. Can I bring that? Hey, hey. No, you cannot bring that in. I mean, come on, Mr. Perino. No, no, no problem. You could help me. You got a lot of power. You could do a lot of good. Could, listen, I want to wake people up. Look at Mr. Perino. You could write about what's going on out there. We're getting soft. Yeah, that's right. See, we're getting right. Listen, you know what the Bible says about, about temptation? You listen, no, no, listen, you watch out that because you, you, you watch out that you don't enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the, but the flesh is weak. Somebody wanted to come and somebody wanted to take over this country right now. Right now, you tell me who'd fight. Now, you tell me who'd fight, who'd really, I mean, they'd rather, they'd rather just, you know, I mean, just mess around. The girls that were killed, uh, people say there were sex crimes. <laughs> You see that? That's a lie. Hey, look, no, 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 no. What, what is that guy? Hey, look, Mr. Prino, making out is something that you do, right? So that, what does that got to... See, that's, that's, that. no, that's crazy. No, forget, forget I mentioned it, huh? <laughs> Mr. Prino, I like you. And, and listen, you can write about me. You can write about me, but it better be the truth. How do I know? I don't know enough. 
I'm supposed to know about the truth, but, but, but don't go away. Wait a minute. Look, look I, don't know to, I don't know how to get in touch with you. I don't have an address. I... Mr. Carino, I'm not going to tell you how to find me. I'll tell you something else, too. If what you write about me isn't the truth, I'll find you. But what, what, what if I, you know, ask for the truth? I'll try to... Don't get up, Mr. Prina, please, just don't get up. No, I... Honey? Mm. Doorbell. <coughs> What time is it? Oh, uh, quarter to twelve. Um, somebody's ringing the door. Yeah, your mom already scooped you. Go on back to this, okay? What is it? Centurion was just in my apartment. What? Had a gun in my head. What do you want? Every one of them? Yeah, he wants me to be his press agent. He's supposed to be a press agent to a killer. I'm gonna drink. What do you want you to do? Drink for God's sakes. What would you like? Scotch you know this. I'd make me one too. He said, does he want you to tell his story? Yeah, he gave me an or else. Or else I'll get you. What story does he want you to tell? Huh? Hold the truth. You know, the truth. What do I do? Have you told the police? That's it. I've had time to stop my hands from shaking. Would you like to lie down? No, I'd like that. What does he look like? I told you he had a mask on. So you don't have any vital information right now, huh? So this can wait an hour. What do I do? I want you to write it. It's a typewriter. Oh, come on. Hey, hey, hey. Maybe you didn't hear me. Did you hear me? The Centurion ain't your average critic. If he doesn't like what I write, he shoots me. It's too late now anyway. You're going to have to phone it in. I'm not phoning it in and I'm not writing it. What would I say? Nice American boy who wants to straighten out a corrupt nation? No, thank you. Tell him I went to China. You sent me to China. You trying to hustle me for a raise? It's not a bad idea. What's my life worth per hour? Because sure as hell, if I write that story, I'm not going to live out the week. Well, aren't you being a little overly dramatic, Vince? Dramatic? A thousand dollar bonus. Will you write the story? All right, you got a half hour to the last edition. It was probably the hottest story anybody ever had a chance to write. You sat in the same room with the psychopathic killer. You lived to tell the story. And I just can't believe you don't want to tell it. You're a newspaper man. It's news, it's real, and it happened. Give me a rewrite. You know, you don't have to do this. thousand dollars and a bullet surprise, I think it'll probably come up with something. <laughs> this is Perino. You ready? The uh, man in the chair had a gun pointed at my head when I opened the door of my apartment. That's right. That's right. Just keep typing. He had on a mask, a hood. Two holes cut out for his eyes and one for his mouth. Paragraph. Where are you going? He said, uh, I know you. Madeline, look. What you're doing is sick. You're asking that man to put his life on the line. Now, wait a minute. I am not the killer. No. Well, then you're his press agent. You've built him into a star. What is this, the new liberal line? It's not ignorance and poverty that breeds monsters, it's Crawford. Is that it? God, you are impossible. It is impossible to argue with. Good. Let's go to bed then. You're asking me to stop doing something I believe in. Believe in? I doubt you believe in anything except that you're right. Well, maybe I'm wrong. I'm not perfect. Oh, God, you just twist everything around. Now you've made yourself right by saying you're wrong.
No, only that I learned that I scared myself out of about ten years' growth. No. No, but after that lecture you gave me, I thought that everybody on the street was Centurion. Next time you come over here, I love you too. Her daughter dyed her hair. Happy. Good God, what? Why? Blondes get murdered by the dream girl killer. Excuse me, the centurion. Is that what? Oh, honey. Honey, you didn't have to dye your hair. How can you be so sure? Well, I am sure. That's why. Well, but, but the paper says that nobody's safe. Well, that was a... a scare headline in a cheap yellow paper. Honey, first of all, the chances of anything happening to anyone are very small. Well, the chances of anything happening to you are non-existent. This man, well, he's only after grown-up dream girls, ones that are much older than you. The last one was 23, and one of them wasn't even a blonde. Honey, he's not interested in you. Look, I know you're growing up, but he doesn't. And for a kid who doesn't eat your green beans, you're pretty growing up. You're not that growing up, but... Poor am I glad. You see, now don't be in such a big hurry, okay? How did this all start? Me and Peggy were on the telephone discussing all these gory details, and they both got hysterical. It's incredible. Why? Why is it incredible? Yes. Trip, that's all they read, that's all they hear about murder and crime. Well, honey, I'm not printing lies. Aren't there other stories? Well, sure, I print them. We'll be back in Boston in six months. Is that what you think I want? No, of course not. I'm sorry. I don't know. I mean, I, sometimes I think that saving the sun is the most important thing in the world, but does it even matter? Of course it matters. Without newspapers, Wilder gave it would still be just a apartment house in Washington. Maybe. No, there's no maybe. I mean, there is a reason. Anybody that owns a printing press should beg, borrow, and steal to publish. Publish? Just be there. Publish what, though? That's the question. Anything, anything. You just keep yourself alive. Our circulation is up 75,000. Why? The centurion. If he goes on trial, we're going to go right over the top. I didn't have a prayer. Remember, that's what they said? They said the sun was finished, doomed. It's like the Herald Express and the old Daily News in Chicago. Five newspapers in New York in the last 15 years, dead and buried. But by God, I'm still here, daily and Sunday. Trip, I'm sure you're right. I just can't help feeling that... You're still trying to prove something to your father. Look at you. 
Hi, man. How are you? Hey, you look wonderful. Good to see you. Well, circulation was up 82.6 uh, three weeks ago. It's down a little now, but we're making it. What happened three weeks ago? Police thought they caught this uh, centurion. Oh, yes, I remember. Well, you're not relying on the police to make fools of themselves every week. No. I gather that whole thing has had a rather negative effect on business. You'd be surprised how many families are afraid to leave their houses. Can't be making you too popular with the business community. Me? Well, when a few million people start to get panicked, somebody's pushing the button. In this case, it seems to be a homicidal maniac. Hmm? The weather like this all the time out here. Yes. I wonder anybody gets any work done. Lucky I'm only here overnight. Oh, that's right. Thank you. You think I'm overplaying this story? Well, you know my position, Trip. The owner of a newspaper has a public trust. And I think he has to give a little trust to the public. You don't build circulation by exploiting the public's fears, prurient interests. Well, what if it's that or nothing? I mean, that or going under. I don't accept those choices. Those are the choices only in the absence of uh, imagination. You know, I'll tell you, that's something I've, I've, um, I've always wondered about. You mentioned prurient interests. Do you think that's something we just have, or is it something we're taught to have? Leave it to Madeline to get to the heart of the matter. Is it natural to be fascinated by violence and sex and all the rest of it? Or is it something we're taught? What do you think? I think it's the nature of the beast. Well, it's not important. Well, if you're right, what significance does that have to us as newspaper proprietors? Well, you think I'm exploiting it. Do you? I do anything I have to do to sell enough newspapers to keep going. It's a worthy goal, keeping a newspaper alive. I think it is. And did you ever think what the blue noses would do if they ever got exercised enough about certain newspapers that print anything they have to? A prior restraint? No, that's not possible. Not in this country. And certainly not because of a few uh, lurid headlines. Well, I thought we were talking about more than a few lurid headlines. I'll tell you, son, I think you're selling people short. Give them some meat, substance, good reporting, good writing, and they'll buy your newspaper. Of course, um, I'm the genius who told you you would fall on your face out here, so that shows you what I know. <laughs> oh, I love you. How about a swim? That's the best idea I've heard today. E you up for a race, uh, four laps? Sure. I warn you, I'm Mark Spitz. See you in a half an hour. Okay. Huh. I think Crawford lost his mind this morning. It's not my department. I got an assignment for you. He wants you to call out the National Guard. Only the governor can call out the guard. Uh, Vince, I'm serious. Well, then vote for me in November. He wants a column. Now, I don't mean for you to use the exact words he said, but... And then he gave me the exact words. Fear is everywhere, enslaving the city, locking young women into their homes, seeping into our children's dreams. Something must be done. If police can't stop this maddened gunman, then it's up to Mayor Boylan to protect the people. And if that means calling out the guard, I'm supposed to call out the guard. I told you he lost his mind this morning. And he wants it under my byline, huh? No chance. Good. Tell him. You're damn right. Who was that all about? Prophet's taking on the mayor. He's endorsing Prouty? He'd endorse Lassie if it sold papers. No, he's not endorsing Prouty. He's attacking Boylan. Don't ask me why. You know, Lassie's not such a bad idea. George, I've been on this from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You have sashimi? Mm -hmm. So how do I cash in? 
It depends. What do you want to do? I want to make a score. I want to tell Crawford what he can do with his, uh, with his newspaper. I need money for that. Okay. So, you want to write a book? Not a book. The book, George. You and me. A lot of money. Okay, take his seven-foot shoulders. Seven feet? What am I going to do with Oh, what the hell? You freeze what you don't use. The kind that come out an hour after the Israelis take the airport. There's money in that, isn't it? Some, but not the kind you're talking about. George, if I don't get rich on this, I'm an incompetent. If I don't make money, I should be put away somewhere. I'm the guy that looked down the barrel of the gun. There's money in that. But you already wrote it. I mean, brilliantly, maybe, but it's yesterday's news. Yesterday I called for the National Guard. Who knows what I might do today unless somebody stops me. So stop me, Georgie. Make me some money, television, docudramas. Vince, if you want a book, you want television, all right. You gotta have an angle. A fresh angle. What angle? Well, what do you want from me? You're the writer. This is Hollywood, isn't it? Well, the guys are running around here making thousands of dollars. They can't spell their name. Why? They don't have an angle. They don't even... Why do I have to have an angle? They don't have anything. You need to grab me. No. Oh. This is Bill Norman. We're at Parker Center, Metropolitan Police Headquarters, home of the Special Homicide Task Force assigned to what's being called Centurion Kills. There have been six of them now, six in all, and police... Oh, no. Let's take it again. Do you have any witnesses for last night's killing? No comment. Do you have any suspects? If I had, I'd have a comment. Not necessarily. This is true. Do you have a suspect? Not necessarily. Yeah. No comment. You've got a suspect. Now, is that true? It's true that there's a rumor. Look, we've got something definite, and I'll tell you. Then you do have something. Come on. Keep it around strong. Do that. Do what? Make it sound like we've got a suspect. <laughs> Did I? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you hear the news? What? We got a suspect. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, we go out for coffee and Ryan wraps the case. I don't believe it. <laughs> Me either. Cheer up, Primo. It's not over yet. No way. After that National Guard column, I got my head handed to me. I don't owe you a five-cent piece. And after I write this story, your chief can run for governor and get elected. You go right along with it. You told me you made the story? Oh, keep up, Moonen. Who the hell started it? A guy just snuts out six dames. It leaks out. You hear about it. It doesn't need Vince Perino. All I want is five minutes alone with the man. Is that asking too much? Yes, it's asking too much. Vince, if I could, you think I wouldn't five do it? Just five minutes. There's a press corps in this town right now, like savages. You come out with an exclusive interview, they'll lynch me. Let me talk to the man, I won't write about it. What? It'll be off the record, what about it? No, crazy. Let me take a look at him. Just take a look at him. No writing. Just a look. Okay, you know how this works? You can see him, but he can't see you. So this is Tooker. What did Brino say? He said the voice might be the same. All right. Let's go with this. Make as you can get it. Headline. Centurion caught. Well, look, maybe the guy didn't do it. Look, I didn't mean Centurion caught. I meant Centurion caught question mark. Oh. Okay. I'm strong. Sugar is still hanging tough? Tell me about your witness. Is she gonna hold up? I don't know. I mean you don't know. Well, how can you know something like that, you know? But I'll tell you something, I don't think he did it. I think when we nail the guy who did it, he's gonna hold his hands up in the air and he's gonna say, you got me. The last thing he's gonna do is say he didn't do it. Your shrink tell you that? Okay. I don't care how many times he says he didn't do it, nobody does, Lieutenant as long as we have a witness. Okay, what's happening today, Al? Bomb exploded in Cairo. I think we did it. As far as Crawford's concerned, the only story is Centurion. 
What's his name? Tooker. Tooker. Oh, yeah. What's happening on that? So, where are we on the Tooker story? I've got five reporters at headquarters. Now, forget about headquarters. What else are you doing? What else is there? Well, I don't know. What else could there be? I don't understand. I just don't understand. Aren't you curious about this fellow? I sure as hell am. So is everybody else in this city. I mean, who is he? Where did he come from? Schools, jobs, army, reform school? What's his story? How crazy is he? All right, Brian, you know what I want. A complete bio. It pictures the family, girlfriends, anything you can get. Snapshots as a kid. You got to buy them, buy them. I want every squib you can get on him between now and bedtime. Print it. Uh, you do know the guy isn't guilty, don't you? What are you talking about? The Constitution, innocent until proven guilty. I mean, he's been arrested, that's all. He says he didn't do it. Now, who says he did? Oh, right, yeah. The alleged killer. That makes it okay, I forgot. What makes it okay? You know, I'm sick of this, Tut. This story you've been stuck in your craw ever since it broke. You're damn right it has. Well, you may not like it. This story saved this paper and therefore your job. Yes, I keep telling myself that, but you know, it doesn't wash anymore. I mean, it's just starting to get so dirty that it doesn't wash. What does that mean? We have no right to invade this man's life. Now, he just might be innocent. He just might be falsely... Easy, Tut. Easy. Yeah, right. It is easy, isn't it? I mean, you just start selling slowly, and then pretty soon uh, you've got nothing left to sell. Except newspapers. Now, come on, Tut. This isn't exactly Sacco and Benzetti. I mean, the man's been identified. This is news. The TV's going to be screaming about it for an hour tonight. What are we supposed to do? Pretend we haven't heard about it? What do you want? Discretion. Bull! The people want to know about this guy. Well, of course they do. They also want to know exactly what Elizabeth Taylor does in bed. Now, the question is, do they have a right to know? Now, let me put it another way. Does their right to know mean more than his right to a fair trial? They've been debating about the clash between the First and the Sixth Amendment for 200 years. I don't imagine we're going to settle it right now, so why don't we hold off until tomorrow? Because... I'm not going to be here tomorrow. I quit. Oh, come on, Tut. There isn't a paper in the country that's run along the moral lines that you propose. Come on, let's nail this down, and then we'll discuss it over a good steak and a glass of decent whiskey, huh? I'll tell you what. If I'm not there, you just start without me. All right. This is a newspaper. And we're here to publish the news, not to keep it a secret. We don't work for the prosecution or the defense. We work for the public. For those of you who are still working, go to work. Vera, is this the man that shot you? Yeah, I understand. Okay, you don't think the Bureau could use another lawyer, do you? Oh, <laughs> okay, thanks. No problem, she's gonna be all right. Well, forget it. Took her escape from a prison facility outside of Denver. He was still there when the Peyton girl and the Potter girl were both killed. Unless he managed somehow to borrow Centurion's gun, he didn't shoot anybody. I'm sorry. I don't believe it. What, anything wrong? You're kidding. Tell me you're kidding. <laughs> hey, Moonen, you want to be chief? <laughs> there goes Boylan's chance for re-election unless he can tiptoe out of it. Yeah, I'll do what I can, but this is not your usual police screw-up. They're going to write books about it. Hey, Moonen, I told you I'd do what I could. All right. Got a 
36 percent shares, 90 percent of that is women, uh, 18 to 34, and households. Hang on a minute. Then I got a tip. They're releasing Tucker. He's not the centurion. I'll call you back. How good is your information? It's good. I think we're alone on this. They're trying to find the best way to go public for the least lousy. Pot keeps boiling, huh? Yeah. Right, I'll see you tomorrow. Boy, you take a stock early, huh? So what? What's wrong with that? Well, I don't want you to go home when it's like this. Well, why not? What are you afraid of? Well, you know. Is that really true? Hmm? Never mind. Wait a minute. Doris, where do you live? Look it, I'll follow you home. I can get home by myself. Oh, really, Doris, listen. I'll follow you home. I want to, I want to follow you home. Okay? Okay. Yeah, well, see why I don't think it's so great coming home alone. Yeah. Doris, why do you live way out here? Well, it's really cheap. Anyway, I like it. Who lives over there? Uh, some people uh, that went to the desert to look for uranium. Oh. Are you coming in? For what? Well, I'm not home yet. I mean, how do I know the centurion's not inside with his gun waiting for me? Please? Okay. Wait, wait a minute. I'll, I'll be right there. What's the matter? Nothing. I just want to, I just want to check out something. Hey, come here, Alice. 
show you something. What do you want to show me? Well, come here and look. See? What? Just hold on a minute, will you? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So anyway, I, I wanted to talk to you. I mean, I mean, I mean, I've been thinking that, you know, they're going to get me one of these days, you know, like freeze, you're under arrest, you know? And when, when that happens, I'm going to need somebody, you know, like to carry on. So, 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 so do you know what I decided? What, what, what I'm going to do is when they get me, I'm going to tell you the whole story, Mr. Perino. It's anything that you want to know, you ask me and I'll tell you. That way, you'll be the one who knows the true story. And you'll be able to explain it to them. Because, you know, like, I, I'm the one that's making them listen, but, but you're the one that can put it into words. Well, but I, I don't know how to get in touch with you. I can take it. Listen, Mr. Prino, I can't talk long. Um, Mr. Prino, I can't, I, I gotta go, I can't talk anymore. What you always wanted to know about a sex murder, but we're afraid to ask. Really? Tremendously exciting. Tremendous. The killer's background, his family life. His sex life. I'm already sold. How many copies do you think, Douglas? Three million. I can't think of anybody in the entire world who isn't interested in what makes this guy tick. A psychological portrait of a killer. Potential is tremendous. What about his background? Uh, would you say... I wouldn't say anything, Mr. Thompson. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. It's a bit like the uh, hoochie-coochie dancer at the carnival. I mean, what you see out front is alluring, but if you want to see more, put your money on the line. Yeah, only that one only cost a dime. <laughs> As I remember, Georgia was a quarter, and for that kind of money, you wanted action. I figured I got my money's worth, though. The tease was the show. I am right, aren't I, that what you're saying is that unlike the dancer, you are going to deliver? You will get your money's worth. You will get to see your... Uh naked crazy do his dance. How can you be so sure? Well, I, uh, we keep in touch. I didn't realize. If Vincent and Centurion don't get together, then obviously all bets are off. We came here because we know he's going to get the story. I have no problem. All right. Well, uh, we don't have to lock this up right now, but maybe we could take a look at the deal, the broad strokes. On receipt of manuscripts? We'll advance $500,000 against royalties. What split? 
50-50 on the first 200,000 copies, 60-40 to 350, and after that, Mr. Perino gets 70 cents on every dollar. Hmm. Subsidiary rights? One million dollars for first serial and foreign. Ah, oh, no, no, we have to keep that separate. One million for foreign and 250,000 for first serial. Magazine rights? Magazine, 100,000. Book club? 750. Vincent, please. What's up? <laughs> oh, so I'm married. Oh, Vincent, please. You're going to get us a rest of here. Before the book comes out, I, I get an advance of three and a half million dollars for a single copy. So that's the book business. Well, want to meet an author, baby? <laughs> Six novels. Yeah. Nobody wanted to read it. I told the book I haven't even written. All of a sudden, I'm a rich man. Why is that? <laughs> well, uh, you got a hell of an agent. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Well, what's the matter with you, Ben? Yeah. You're going to make three and a half million dollars. Buy yourself a house. Buy a boat. <laughs> Buy an island. You can sit on the sand and make sandcastles. Well, I always hated my own sandbox. Yeah, that's it. You're just not used to being rich. That's what it is. That's it. Enjoy it. Hey, Kenny. Hey, oh, Shirley, come on, let me buy another one. Oh, no, no, no. Wait, wait one more. No, no, no. No, no. no man, it's, uh, it's almost 6 o'clock. I got to get home and <laughs> do my laundry. <laughs> hey, why don't you call that girl? Uh, call your girl up and celebrate. No. What's her name? Roseanne. Yeah. I'll see you, man. Yeah. The death penalty is an issue for the legislature and for the governor. I'm only the mayor of one city in a very large state. Now, I realize there's a great deal of strong feeling on this subject. People want something done about violent crime. They don't want to continue to be victims. They're saying, what good is government if it can't provide protection? That's the least it should do. And I agree with that. But the death penalty does not provide protection. We had the death penalty. It didn't stop violence. This curious person only raises again. Well, <clears throat> once again, lousy. What the hell? The whole world is lousy. Why blame it on me? You close the door, I'm gonna make a phone call. You're drunk. You're right. You're pushing your luck. Oh, why is it every time I push my luck around here, I'm the guy that's going bad? To hell, I put your luck, don't I? Push everybody else's luck around here. I make you rich, don't I? Go on home. Take a trip, trip. Wait a minute. Hey. Let's have a drink. Have a drink, buddy? <laughs> don't drink. With the help. I'm just a guy you hired to dig in the dirt and collect your garbage for you. Huh? While you go dancing with the governor and kissing babies with the mayor, pretending to be Mr. Lighty. <laughs> right, you should go dry out someplace. Okay? Hey! Hold it. I'm buying in. Buying in. I'm going to be a part of your group, huh? How's that grab huh? I done grab you. Guys like you, it's breeding. I don't want to hang around guys like me. You might, uh, might get some of it on you. Mm. 
You suckers invented stealing. We're just a bunch of amateurs. You get a lot of comfort from that, Vince? Does that make you feel good? Thinking of yourself as one of the masses, one of the boys? I'm better than you. How would you know? You've never been either. What do you mean because you can sit in a bar for three or four hours and drink beer and scratch your belly? You think that makes you a common man? You're not a common man. You're a hustler. Call boy. Come on. Hey, uh... Hey, I'm moving up. I'm moving up, baby. Move up with you. Come on, man. It's our case. She can't take us off it. They want somebody to take the heat. Okay, why us? Look, you got all the press in the beginning, so your neck was stuck way out. We didn't blow it. We didn't pick up Tooka. Hey, Jay, I don't like this a whole lot myself. You get it? But the mayor and those news hounds are all over us on this case. Now, they're making a hero out of the killer and fools out of the police. Now, this is PR. Cosmetic. But I gotta make the move and that's it. Ms. Zubowski, this is Detective Savala of the Los Angeles Police Department. You called about six weeks ago, right after Amy Lou Payton was... Oh. Yes, ma'am, I understand. I'll call you back. What's up? Sexy day. Just spoke to a naked lady in the bathtub. You want to call her back? She'll be there for an hour. <laughs> Still trying to work it out? I've been rechecking every call we ever got, starting from the top. Uh, these are my notes from the day. Forget it. We're being transferred. Split up and transferred. This was our case. You mean we're not even on it? You got it. They're sending me to the 4th Precinct. You're going to the 9th. There's not a lot going down in the fourth, you know. You bust a kid for a joint, it's a big week. Maybe you got the right idea. Let's get down in flames. Let's start all over from the top. Uh, what was the name of that, that woman? Uh, what woman? Uh, from Eagle Ridge Drive. Uh, you remember there was a report of a prowler on the night of the first killing? At least that point. All right, let's start there. Look, I've told you the same thing over and over again. I didn't see anything. There was somebody in the bushes, and then he ran. Was he watching the house? I don't know what he was doing. Well, let's go back earlier in the day, okay? Uh, what did you do that day? Nothing. I was off that day. I went to the bank, and I stopped by the grocery store to pick up a couple of... What? What happened? Nothing, really. There was this guy. He works at the market. What did he do? Nothing. It's just the way he looked at me. He carried my groceries out to the car, and, and when I got in the car, I felt him staring at me. And then, after he put the groceries in the car, he was looking at my mail. Which market? Trancus on Pacific Coast Highway. Why didn't you tell us this before? You never asked me. Excuse me, sir. I'm looking for somebody that I think usually works in the vegetable department. He's about uh, 25 years old, sort of darkish, maybe medium height or something. Oh, it sounds like Tony. Yeah, that'd be Tony what? Uh, Tony Pate. Is he around? Yes, yeah, over in produce. Uh, what's the problem? Well, no problem. Do you mind if I talk to him? Uh, no. No, it's all right. Thank you very much. Sure. Tony? Good yeah. Are you Tony? Yep. My name is Armstrong. Police Department. You're the... Uh, you're Lieutenant Armstrong? Yeah. I've heard of you. I've heard of you. Is that a fact? Yeah. Oh, Lieutenant Armstrong. You're, uh, you're Jack Armstrong, right? You've been reading the newspapers, huh? Yeah, I do. I like to read, uh, like to read The, the Godfather. You know, I think, uh, I think he's, uh, you know, I think he's pretty good. That's what they say. 
Yeah, well, uh, listen, is, uh, is there something that I can do for you? Well, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. See, I've been, I've been trying to get a line on this person. I know she comes in here once in a while to do her marketing, you know. Yeah. that? You probably recognize her if you saw her. Her name's Felice Davenport. Well, what do you want to know about her? Name doesn't mean anything to you, huh? Wow, well, you could tell that, couldn't you? Just, wow, well, Lieutenant, that's really something. Yeah, well, you know, it's just a long shot. You know how it is. You, you try 100, you're going to strike out on 99. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> Listen, I guess, uh, you know, maybe not here, but up front, I guess this is a, a pretty good job in the sense that it's a good place to meet women, huh? Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's okay, you know. Listen... Are you still looking for the Centurion? Jeez, every cop on a hundred miles is looking for that guy. No, you know. Pretty good looking stuff here. Yeah, well listen, hey, would you like something? Would you like an apple? Or, uh, or an orange or something like that? Yeah. I wouldn't say no to a ripe banana. Yeah, that's okay. I got ripe bananas. <laughs> there you go. Some good ones? No, no, no. Hey, one's plenty. Thank you. Like it. Otherwise, it would be uh, it would be like a bribe, right? Right. Right. Must be pretty good, huh? You know, like powerful. You know, being a cop. Yeah. I never thought of it like that. You know. Oh, sure, man. You're the armed force. You can walk into anything. Anybody gives you any trouble, you straighten them right out. That's true, you know? That's right. <laughs> You're right. Uh, Listen, if I do pick up this police Davenport, maybe I'll, uh, I'll ask you to come in and take a look at her, okay? Well, what do you, uh, what did she do? Well, you see, I don't know if she did it, and I don't think I ought to, uh, you know how it is. Well, you, wait, I know. Okay, listen, Tony. Nice to meet hey, you. Hey, listen, hey, it was really nice meeting you. It really was. She really God. Really was nice meeting you, Lieutenant. <laughs> Good banana, man. Wow. Uh, okay. Okay, I'll, I'll see you later. Uh, I'll stay in touch with you. Officers. Police officers! I'm the landlady. What do you want to know? Tony Pate? Oh, he's at work. Well, he told us to wait for him here. Well, it'll be quite a while yet. Unless he gets off early. We'll wait. Well, I don't want to wait in the car. You know, we'll come back later. Oh, you want to go up? Go on up. Oh, well, thank you very much, Mrs. Uh... Uh, Purdy. Mrs. Purdy. I'd go on up with you. But I can't abide them stairs. That's all right. We'll find it. Keys marked. Second landing to the left. By the ladies' man, isn't he, old Tony? I wouldn't know about that. Thank you. Pate. Nice, quiet fella. Upstairs. Upstairs. Don't look like that. She invited us. I'm sure she did.
That uh, policeman a while ago, uh, everything all right? Oh, yeah, he just uh, wanted to know something uh, about some uh, person, I don't know, he thought was a customer. Oh, hmm. Why, why? Oh, no, no, it's just that uh, after he left, he called me on the phone and asked for your address. I hope you don't mind, I gave it to him, okay? No, I don't mind. You all right? Yeah, I know, it's okay. Everything all right? Oh, yeah, well, you let... <laughs> In what way is he a creep? He just is. Okay, what makes you think that he went to the... Uh, uh, this... Dylan's disco. Right. I don't know. I mean, that's where he says he goes every time he gets mad. Who would he mad at? Who knows?
This is it's Armstrong. What are you shooting for, Tony? You don't have to show me you can shoot. I know that. I'm going across there. You ready? Okay, go. Go up those steps after him. Okay? All right. You take these steps, and we'll squeeze him when we get up there. Let's go there. Centurion. I'll stay on it. Down, yeah. Vince? Are you 
on this. The circus is over. We lost our freak. What? We lost our freak. We'll just find out what happened, talk to the police. I didn't tell you, did I? Uh, I had a phone call from the Centurion. I taped it. I'm not going to give it to you. I'm going to sit on it. You do it. You're finished. I'm already finished. You're right about that. All right, Riker, this is yours now on a platter, all right? I want you to play it up really big now. Who's the centurion, okay? Play up the Armstrong angle. Hero cop and all that. Make it really big. Uh, uh, check on Armstrong's parents, uh, his dog, his girlfriend, whatever you can. No leaks from inside the prison. He's sane. He's insane. Would have gone for months. Well, tomorrow should be a big day. The yeah, street sale should go for a half million tomorrow. Something else will come along. Yeah, always does, doesn't it? 